All right, first of all, congratulations on uh, your achievement here. And uh, thank you so much for participating. We uh, certainly do appreciate that, uh, keeping you know, this, this thing alive. It's wonderful. Um, introduce yourself and, and uh, what's the name of the piece? Hi, hi, I'm Liz Fetzer and I'm playing As Venturis by Alexa Girasame. All righty, uh, let's start with the technique side uh, first. Towards the beginning of the piece, there's a spot where you go from the rim to the shell and back up to the rim. Um, make sure that you're maintaining control uh, uh, of uh, the note quality and the, and the musicality aspect of it as you go back and forth. You have to make sure and focus as you bring your, your right stick back up to the, to the rim that the, the quality of your right hand on the rim uh, is there from the get-go and conversely also when you go down to the shell. Uh, so let's play through that section and make sure that you're focusing on the quality aspect of uh, uh, note control as you go to the shell back up to the rim. So let's just try that section. A uh, little bit of a, a hiccup right there at the beginning, but the actual articulation was a lot better uh, that time than it was on, on the, the video to present. Uh, so just make sure that you're uh, having awareness of that. Um, it's really easy to kind of get into the, uh, the flow of this and kind of lose uh, sight of the actual uh, quality of articulation as we're doing things, okay? Uh, on the uh, accelerando roll, um, it says, take your time, right? Yeah. Okay. Make us become impatient, not you. I mean, really exaggerate this. Now, I know this thing's already clocking in at 6.30, so you don't want to you know, take this out to 30 minutes while we have to go get lunch and you're still trying to do it yourself. But give it a more of an anticipation of, come on, make us do that, Okay. Because uh, that's, a, that's a musicality effect uh, that you can do here. Uh, so just go through that and take your time. Imagine it is a very heavy locomotive that's leaving the station. Okay, yeah, you're going to get up to that top speed, but it's going to take a little longer. See what I'm talking about? So, so try that. Use a little patience. Make us impatient. So go for it. And my next comment, you actually did a little bit better live here, but the, every time that you uh, play the multiple bounce rolls, uh, especially as you got uh, uh, louder in volume, uh, you did something which we tend to do uh, as, as drummers, is we put more intensity into it because it's getting louder, but the more intensity, they end up turning into presses instead of multiple bounce. Make sure that you keep the quality of the multiple bounce the same. So if you're down here, we have that multiple bounce quality. As you get higher and louder, don't let it turn into a press. Make sure it's okay. You don't want it to turn into a double stroke roll, but you do still want to hear the multiple bounces instead of actually presses. Um, if you dig into that drum with intensity, the louder you get, the more pressy it's going to be. Okay. So, um, Let's just try that as a, a, a technique aspect. Start soft with a, a multiple bounce roll, 
get up to about mezzo forte, forte and then come back down and try to maintain the quality of the multiple bounce instead of really digging in and pressing as you, as you get to the louder section. So do a crescendo diminuendo just on, on a uh, multiple uh, 12. All right. <laughs> Very good. Uh, that sounded uh, really nice. Okay. Next, um, when you do crescendos and diminuendos, you don't necessarily always have to go to the edge. Okay. Uh, when you go to the edge, it is a softer sound. That is true by the very nature of, of the head itself. But also, what does it change as you get towards the edge? The sound quality. The uh, sorry. The sound quality. Yes, the sound quality, the, the tonality, the, the color, uh, the timbre, right? If that's a sound choice that you want is a change in uh, uh, timbre as you, uh, you know, diminuendo, that's fine. But don't just go down there because it, it's a little bit easier to play soft towards the edge. Um, it also gives a little bit of a visual aspect to it, but you don't want to uh, diminish the sound quality of the role uh, and change the color unless that's something you intend, all righty? Um, musicality. I really enjoy the expressiveness that you did like whenever you swing your hand behind, okay? That musicality aspect, it's emoting, okay? You could do a little bit more with that uh, and have fun with this piece. Like whenever you do a stick shot or a rim shot, you know, you can, uh, you know, bring your shoulder up and you know kind of kick your head just a little bit. Um, uh, make sure that whenever you get into the hand section, okay, you evoke Tito Puente. Uh, how much Latin do you listen to or, or have you played? I can't say very much. Okay, uh, uh, you might want to you know uh, uh, join, uh, join in on a Latin ensemble, play some conga, uh, uh, play some tabale, uh, because that's what this is evoking here whenever you get into that, okay? Okay. Uh, so whenever you um, uh, get into the hand motion, evoke the conga slap sound as you come to the, uh, uh, come to the rim. Make sure that your, your fingers are a little bit more relaxed whenever you slap and make the, the drum ring, okay? Uh, 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 so just, just try to, uh, in fact, if you want to try that section, just where you're playing the, the conga type uh, hand section. And when you slap, relax a little bit and kind of make it rain. Let your fingers do the way that your, your, the brush does whenever you're hitting the, the rim to get the brush sound on the head, how it bounces. Yeah, try to get your fingers to do that on the slap and get a ring out of that drum. So try that. Hang on a second, hang on a second. You're really stiff with the finger, okay? You hear the ring that I just got? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you hear that or not? I don't know if it compressed or But it's because how floppy my fingers are, okay? You're coming back to the rim, you're saying stiff, and we're kind of getting a stifle sound out of it. So, um, Get on YouTube, watch a, a video of somebody actually playing conga, okay? That, that's just something you're gonna have to work out uh, in, in the practice room, okay? Also, uh, whenever you're playing with the sticks, with the uh, um, snares off, that's a timbali sound, okay? Okay, yeah. Make this more musical. Start studying, like, like, like I said, Tito Puente, how he approaches timbali. Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, how the African ensembles approach you know, the congas and start emulating that into your own playing. It would make this a little bit uh, um, more enjoyable. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, whenever you did uh, go to the uh, brush, nice groove sound. You really, really did have a ni nice sound. Uh, it's more of a, like a, a jazz drum set groove. Okay. And the way that you phrase that, let it breathe, a little bit of a you know, crescendo diminuendo, that type of stuff. Alrighty, uh, oh, 
during that section also, there's a spot where you use uh, a mallet, okay? Mm -hmm. Explore the different tonalities you can get on where you're hitting in the head with that mallet. Uh, um, I don't know if you're doing, if you're doing it on purpose, it's great, but uh, you can uh, play, uh, say, three quarters of the way in and then play more towards the edge. You get a do -do 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 -do, sort of a quicker type sound. Do -do -do. Okay. That is the musicality aspect, okay, whenever you're doing that. Um, let's see, uh, what else? Right towards the end, it's okay to really emote. I mean, you're coming into that final section, you're going wild and everything. Uh, was you intending that last um, note to be just on the rim or was you wanting to actually make it a rim shot? I intended it to be a shot, and I, yeah. I think I might have missed it. This is nothing more than uh, the, you know, wax on, wax off, paint the fence. You've got to just uh, pound it out and repeat it. It's all about muscle memorization. <clears throat> you have to make sure that the drum is in the same position and same height each and every time. And you have to make sure that your, your uh, stroke and motion to go back for the shot is the same in every time. If you go through that memorization, you will have a higher likelihood of making sure you get that shot sound, okay? Because we're coming up to that and it's ending, stop! It didn't it didn't click, see what I'm talking about? Um, the difference between the good and the great. The good will, pr will practice something until they get it. The great will practice something until they can no longer get it wrong, okay? So I know it's a repetitive, boring thing, but just set your drum up, got, doom, da, you know, reward yourself with something. If you know, like if you like um, ice cream or something, just say, I want to give me some ice cream if I can do 50 of these in a row. When you get to 49, you go, ah, see what I mean? But you're getting muscle memorization and you're definitely going to end this piece with that shot. All right, so let's try playing through the piece. Take everything we talked about and then just enjoy it. Emote it and move on.
Elizabeth, I hate to cut you off, but because we had that little recording hiccup, we're going to end up encroaching into Sebastian's time. Okay. I want you to know that uh, it was a pleasure uh, adjudicating you. It shows how difficult it was for us to choose because if you notice the tie, not only did you tie, we had to go to the second tie break. Yeah. I know it's kind of rough, you know, for, for the, the uh, performance when you're raising a tie like that, but it shows the quality level that, that you're at. And it's wonderful for us as uh, uh, the adjudicators and the, the audience members, all right? So thank you so very much. I apologize if we can't finish on, but we have that little recording geek up at the beginning, all right? That's all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, first of all, congratulations on your accomplishment here. Thank and, you. Uh, also for, for just participating with this and keeping this going. Uh, and it shows that you really have a desire to perform. You have a desire to, to move this forward. And we do thank you for that. Since we're uh, doing this kind of for posterity's sake, live streaming and uh, recording it, what's your name and what's the piece you're playing? All right, hello, I'm, I'm Sebastian Vaughn. I go to Missouri Western and I'm playing Tantrum by Kevin Bobo. All right. Um, let's talk about technique first. Uh, first of all, overall, nice chops. Uh, you, you have a really, really good approach uh, to understanding the uh, uh, music, uh, uh, style of the music you're playing and the control aspect that you have uh, at different volume levels is, is astounding, okay? Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, you went from mass grip to traditional grip. You showed that you had master of both sides. And I really did appreciate overall your, your chops. Um, quick question at the beginning. Are those the, the sticks that uh, you used in the video? Yes, these sticks. Okay. One of two things uh, are, are here. Your, the roll at the very beginning comes in pulsing, right hand pulsing. That is either uh, uh, an aspect of you having misbalanced, misweighted sticks, uh, mismatched or it's a product of just trying to play everything right hand lead and you tend to focus in on the right hand as it pushes forward. <clears throat> so do you know if those sticks are actually weighted and matched? Well, yes, I think they're, they're Promark sticks. Um, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they, uh, you, know, you can. Um, they seem to be the same pitch. Okay. Then you know, what it is, then it would be, a right hand lead issue, okay? Yeah. This pretty much happened twice. It happened on uh, the, the uh, uh, multiple bounce roller at the beginning. It also happened on the uh, accelerando uh, uh, towards the end. Uh, I bet you pretty much just attack everything with right hand lead, right? Right. Okay, have you ever reversed it? Have you ever played a passage left hand? Um, I have in the past, but not for this piece. Right, you might just wanna practice that. Okay. So you can kind of get evenness, evenness of sound between the two, because I don't know if you noticed it or not, but it really came across that that you were, it wasn't that exaggerated, but it sure did come across, all right? So play that opening role and try to make sure that the left is uh, crescendoing at the same height and same volume level as the right. So go for it. better okay and also thank you for keeping the quality of the, the multiple bounce i don't know if you've uh, been uh, observing uh, you know what we've done in the past few videos <clears throat> but you kept the the quality of the multiple bounce you didn't dig in and press you, you let the multiple bounce rise along with the crescendo that was that was really really nice okay um what you just did uh, there too uh crescendo diminuendo piano does not always mean you have to go to the edge. If that's what you want visually, or if that's uh, what you want audibly, that's fine. But what changes when you go to the edge? Um, the, the sound, the timbre. No, the timbre, the color, yeah. So if you want that, <coughs> excuse me, if you want that timbre or color sound difference, or if you kind of want that visual, that's okay. But don't, don't make that a habit that you always have to do that, okay? 
<clears throat> the visual aspect, there's other things you can do physically, you know, uh, by down and up or whatever to kind of get that visual aspect that you could get going uh, forward uh, and backwards, okay? Um, there was a nice little switch that you did to the uh, uh, traditional grip. However, when you did, you ended up with some articulation issues, right? Make sure that you can play uh, the left note values uh, with really nice articulation, irrespective of the um, uh, grip that you're using, okay? So start, let's just kind of play that maybe 30, 40 seconds uh, of that section where you switch to the um, uh, traditional grip. Okay. Did you notice that the uh, bounce quality is different? Stick to stick there, but uh, uh, right hand to left hand? Yeah, and whenever you go to the stick taps, yeah. you're actually supposed to be uh, presenting uh, a, an authentic rhythm there, correct? Yes. Yeah, did you notice that it really was kind of, uh, kind of a fuzzy rhythm instead of an articulated rhythm? Yeah, it might have not, it's not the, the cleanest. Definitely the, the, it's the pressure, I think, with my thumb. And yeah, I want to get into that, by the way. Um, whenever you're doing stick to stick stuff, okay, it's very similar to bouncing a basketball, okay? So if you bounce a ball, as the, as the ball comes up into your hand, it comes up and then it goes down, right? So it's bouncing. The same thing here, okay? But if you get into more, Notice how I'm still able to play a uh, consistent rhythm. You know, it, it turns more into uh, like a double stroke roll bounce type situation. Right, okay. And it all has to do with keeping the fulcrum relaxed and keeping the fingers around so that you're actually controlling. Here's what you can do in both hands, by the way. I will demonstrate this in the left first because it's visually a little bit easier. Uh, finger control. Do finger bounces, okay? Open up the grip and you just get, you kind of get it started. But once you get the motion started, keep the hand steady and just bounce with your thumb. Try that. Okay, lower the height just a little bit. Now, let's take the first finger and do it. Now, do it with your thumb, do it with your finger, and see if you can get the same height and same consistency. Very good. Did you notice what you did? You brought the height down and got more consistent. Did you notice that? Yeah. yeah. And you can have fun with this, okay? Like paradiddles. You know, thumb, finger, thumb, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, finger. You know, and just uh, play double paradiddles. Have fun with it. But what you do there is you're getting the consistency of the bounce with the left, okay? With the right, you do it with the first finger or the middle finger, I mean, and then the ring, uh, ring finger, and then the pinky, and then all of them, okay? And as you get into that, this will start becoming more and more bouncy. Then you can start controlling the heights. Say if I'm doing you know, what we call hurricanes, right? Most of that is with finger. I can add an accent. Now I can accent on the left. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Right? And then another right and so on, okay? That's all done through controlling uh, the balance of the fingers. All right? Now, describe for me a four-year-old throwing a tantrum? Um, it's very all over the place. Um, there's very drastic sounds, honestly. Like you could go from throwing like a little tantrum to just throwing everything everywhere, making um, 
making us seen. Yeah. Uh, and then what happens to the tantrum whenever, say, the parent says, shush, gets, tantrum go away? Yeah, tantrum go away. No, <laughs> it does not. Oh. You've ever been in a store and watched a four-year-old? That four-year-old is still hungry. Yeah, oh, Cass, I'm coming right now. Okay, sass. Right? The tantrum is still there. It's just a session. Okay? We walk through this piece. Now, I mentioned in the, the notes, uh, if you read through the notes, you almost threw a tantrum. You are almost there. Okay? We walk through each. Suddenly, chaotic. Intensity, wildly, creeping, ferociously, okay? Those are different aspects of the tantrum that you can bring out through this piece. I need you to throw that four-year-old tantrum throughout the four and a half minutes of this piece, okay? Doesn't mean going out of control because you're actually acting out the tantrum, but you present Chaos, it looks like chaos to us, but it's actually, you know what you're doing, okay? Because you're being consistent with it, that type of stuff. But to us, it is very chaotic. So, suddenly, what can you do to, to kind of make us jump? Sudden uh, Be very drastic with the dynamics. It's basically most of the dynamics just need to uh, be a lot louder at the fortissimos, softer at the softer? Yeah. Now, how about this? How about if I told you the tantrum boils up and starts before you even hit that first note? Before the uh, so how you present yourself coming up to the drum, okay? Starting to boil up, boil up, tantrum! All of a sudden, it, it makes me jump. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's suddenly, okay? Now, what can you do on the drum that it comes across chaotic? Our motions more into it, like. Yeah, bingo, there you go. Now, what is chaos? Just chaos, it's. Out of control, right? Out of control. Now, you're gonna be an actor, you're gonna be a performer, you actually are going to be controlling this, but you wanna come across to us being out of control, okay? There's different parts of the head that you could play on. There's different ways that you can approach uh, this. You can make it come across as being chaotic, but you know exactly what you're doing. Does that make sense? So try that opening. Just give me a, all of a sudden, you just suddenly surprise. <laughs> yes! Okay, good. Now let's begin the chaotic section. Play it and just be chaotic with it. Go. Intensity, with intensity, okay? You're showing some of it now, but how can you actually change stylistically to give us a little bit more intensity? Definitely the uh, the rolls, I feel. Uh, any uh, roll with uh, just a regular hit after, or just any of the rolls connected, I feel. in the I've watched the video of uh, Kevin Bobo playing it, playing this piece, and... The, the roll intensity he has is just, it almost sounds like it's faster than he, he's what he's playing. <clears throat> that that could be one characteristic. Have you ever watched the, the video with uh, Cameron Leach? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's, that, that's the one that I kind of reference. Uh, uh, so yeah, you're right, okay. Um, wildly, that's similar to chaotic and, it's, and, and intensity, right? So wildly could be both of those put together, mm -hmm. right? Okay, creeping. What does creeping mean? It's just you're you're nobody knows you're there, but you're you're about to you're about to let them know you're there. Yeah. What's the dynamics right there at the beginning of the creep? Piano. Piano. Okay. Whenever a kid is throwing a tantrum and he's soft, isn't he still intense throwing that tantrum? Yes. It's, it's, Okay, he's sarcastic, he's sassy, mm -hmm. 
okay. It's like, yeah, mom told me to, you know, I have to be quiet, but if you, you know, I'm just going to, okay. Then you get creepy. You creeping as you move forward with that, okay. Then ferociously. I mean, lions, ferocious, right? As you end this, go after with ferocious tenacity. Yeah, I'm going to win this, right? Okay, so everything that we just talked about. When it comes to the right hand heavy on the multiple bounce rolls, uh, uh, piano doesn't always mean going to the edge. Uh, the switching to the traditional grip, make sure that your uh, finger control, especially on the left. Um, and throw me a tantrum based off of the indications that, that Bobo has, has given you on these different sections, okay? Now, we're going to play through the whole piece, and I want you to throw me that tantrum, okay? You almost did it in the video but I want you to throw it to me now, okay?
I hope that was as fun to play as it was to listen to and watch. I actually, I think that actually made it more fun for me to play now. Good. Yeah, and it, 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 it came through with your playing, okay? It was so much more musical. It was so much more communicative, okay? Yeah, you were throwing that team from, good job, Ace. Thank yeah. You. That's what it means to perform. And man, is that a great feeling whenever you can communicate to the audience, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I had a blast. I, yeah, so did we. <laughs>